All right, let's finish with update. All right, so the whole idea here, this is really easy once if you've understood the other things. Um, so we're calling update uh, and we're passing it some information. And really the main heart of update is it's very similar to what we did with favorite things and that we're just gonna call it set value um, as long as we set the right one um, and we give it a new value to, to set. And if we look at it, um, you know, update, we already know which one we're updating and we have some new data here. So we basically just mutate the object locally, all right, and then use its key and then set value with, with that quote, all right? So let's go ahead and, and try this. All right, so I'm going to um, back down to where I had update. Right. And let's see, so I don't wanna make that change just yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, take my movie quotes ref and I want to go to a child. And again, I need to give it a, a key, right? So this is my movie quotes key, All right? And then I just wanna set the value um, right there, right? With this new one, which is just the movie quote itself, right? It's new to the back end, right? Because it, it had an old version. Right. As far as listening for it, if I go back up to my child event listener, um, I've done child added and removed, but there is a child changed here. And what it is gonna pass you is a snapshot that has the changed data in it. All right, so <clears throat> we're gonna do something similar to what we did for re removal. Um, in fact, a lot of the same a lot of the same thing there, right? So first of all, I'm gonna get the key so I know which one of my local ones to remove. And again, you might be thinking to yourself, you know, why didn't why are we even doing this? Because we know which one we deleted. We could have just you know updated the the uh, the um, adapter um, just down in the other. Except that this is now listening for other changes, right? So so changes made um, on the back end, right? All right. So I've got that guy. Um, what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to pull out the movie quote. Okay. So um, so uh, so I would say maybe something like updated movie quote. All right, and that's going to be the data snapshot dot get value, and again, I'm going to take the version that that takes a class, so movie quote dot class. We've seen that before. All right, and then I'm going to loop over each movie quote. All right, so uh, feel free to copy and paste this from the, from the other if you want. Um, so uh, for each movie quote, I'm going to see if um, that movie quotes key equals the key of the one that I want to update this time. All right, and if it does, then I want to take uh, that movie quote and I want to set its values, right? Um, probably should have a little helper method for that. Um, so I'll write that in a second. All right, so uh, something like that. I'll add it to my model object shortly. And then what we want to do is just do um, update, uh, oops, notify, and we can do, uh, see, here's this thing. I, I could do notify item changed um, with the position, except that I haven't been storing the position here. So um, I guess six of one half dozen the other, right? So I get my code is maybe a little bit shorter, but uh, but I, I lose that ability. Um, feel free to do whichever paradigm you want. Um, all right, so I want the, the get values or set values here. So what I'll do is go into this guy and have it stub me in one. Um, so create the method set values. And then all I want to do is say um, this current one's movie equals the updated movie quotes movie. And this quote is equal to the updated movie quotes quote. So something like that, right? Uh, all right, uh, looks good. Let's go ahead and run this guy and see where we're at. All right, so we got it up here. So let's let's go ahead and make a change on this. And again, I, I, I probably should be looking at my, my console in the background. So I will take here, let's let's take the hello world one and let's uh, be really exuberant about that. And again, we see that the changes are happening in real time um, and they're changed locally as well because it was listening for those changes. Um, and what I'm gonna do is, is go into this uh, and I'm gonna remove them back from this and of course, if you change it on the forge, then it won't change until you hit enter here. Um, and we should be listening to it um, on this side. And it looks like, um, let's see, oops, we were in the middle of updating this. Let's go ahead and cancel. 
Um, yeah, it, it updated just, just fine here. Um, we could try that again if you, if you weren't 100% convinced. We'll go ahead and, and, and say, we'll go to everything is awesome, add this guy here, and you can see that it, that it changes immediately. Um, another thing that we could do, and you can see that, that it's changed here, is go to edit and grab this guy and remove them. And here we do see this happening in, in real time, right? So as I'm, as I'm adding or removing these, um, it's, it's cleaning things up. All right, uh, on my web app or from the web app to the, to the mobile app. So very cool. It looks like things are, our code is working. We're pretty much done, right? So I'm um, just getting the slides caught up here. Um, we had our, our, um, our update code here. So I'm gonna continue on. We've made our changes, we've demonstrated them. Uh, a couple more things, right? We should probably um, finish up the child event listener and really there's not that much to do. Um, we're not moving items around or anything like that. So I'm, I'm not gonna implement on child moved. Um, and then, you know, on canceled um, is, you know, we, it's, it's probably good at least to log it, right? Um, if they, um, if it cancels with an error. So, so just for the sake of completeness, we'll, we'll do that. Um, so I'm back in my adapter here and let's see on canceled log dot e for error and i'll pass it my my tag i think i had a constants class in this a constants dot tag um and i'll say uh once again database error and database error and rely on it's to string to do the right thing all right um looks good so just a, a parting comment here about this um, so now we see that, that we really do have things completely in sync. So our app is in sync with Firebase. Um, so so it's, it's working really, really well. Um, if you're taking the class right now sort of, sort of live uh, and you have some friends in the, in the class, um, feel free to, to post uh, friendly quotes to, to a classmate's web client. You can kind of, um, you know, you'd, you'd have to make some changes, of course, to your Google services.json to connect to, to theirs. Um, or you could go to, to a website for theirs. You probably guess it at what theirs would be based on what yours is. Um, anyway, that's about it. Uh, so one more comment though that we'll mention since uh, earlier we, we showed an example where, where the data was persisted on, offline. Remember um, what we said there that was only while the app was, was running, okay? If you want true persistence, uh, they've actually made it incredibly easy to do. We only need a couple of function calls. So um, when your app is starting up, and usually people will maybe put it in main activity or in their application, um, and they'll protect it if it's in main activity with something about saved instance here. Um, and what you're gonna do is just get an instance of your Firebase database, and then you can call it just set persistence enabled um, true, okay? And that, that will, um, that sort of globally, um, you know, set, sets a flag there. And then the only other thing you need to do is, is to set, um, which paths you want to keep persisted, right? Um, so in our case, we only have one. We have the movie quotes reference here. Um, and so we call keep synced true on it. And of course, since we're doing that programmatically, we could change that true or false um, as, our, um, as our app uh, required, right? On individual paths, right? Uh, and honestly, uh, you know, you, 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 you see this and you wonder, you know, if I can do that, why do I even need local, um, you know, SQLite um, locally anymore? Um, and indeed, I've stopped teaching SQLite uh, in this course uh, for that reason, because we can do all of our work, even offline, um, with, with Firebase. And as far as I understand, they're using SQLite under the hood anyway, um, so you're getting still sort of all the, all the goodness of SQLite anyway. All right, uh, so that's it for this unit. Um, come back for our summary. All right, bye-bye.